Welcome to the second lecture on our project on a street traffic light system in which we're programming a PLC to control a traffic light intersection. So in the previous lecture, just to quickly recap, we've created two different lights, which essentially control the traffic from south to north and the traffic from east to west, respectively. And these two lights are essentially your standard traffic lights, which turn from green to yellow, followed by a red. In this video, we're going to be implementing a system which essentially handshakes between the two lights and once this one is red the other one can start transitioning to a green for a certain period of time and essentially vice versa so that the lights can continuously circulate just like you would expect at a normal traffic stop we're also going to be implementing an hmi interface routine which is going to allow us to very easily see what's going on in our system within that routine but also to reapply that to the hmi in the next lecture so without any further delay let's get started before we get started with today's video we just wanted to quickly point out all the great content we've been releasing on the solus plc youtube channel and this includes industrial automation plc programming as well as hmi development and if you enjoy this type of content we would really appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell in order to receive the latest and greatest content we will be posting to the channel. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is implement the handshaking. And to think about that logically, once this light has finished into a red state, we need to transition the other light to a green state. So we're going to double click this branch and that's going to allow us to make changes on the controller. What I'm going to use here is a one-shot instruction. So a one-shot instruction, in case you haven't seen one of my videos covering that specific instruction, essentially allows the PLC to transi transition to a high for a single scan time. So what I'm going to do here is cl click the XIC instruction, double click the name, and then type in ONS, which stands for one-shot. And as you can see, that translates the instruction. And this one shot is going to trigger the reset point for the second light. So I'm going to copy that tag into my, into my branch and change that to an OTE in order to energize that reset for just a single scan time and allow the light to reset. And here, what I'm going to have to create is a tag which is specific to that one shot. So I'm going to type in light one underscore complete underscore ONS. I typically like to give my one shot instructions that specific name so that you know exactly what you're dealing with if you're looking at the tag list. And we're of course going to have to create that. So right click new light one, one shot. It's going to be of type Boolean. It's also going to reside on the PLC controller. Hit create and we should see no errors on that branch. Let's compile that and see what happens to the second light, which should now be reset. So as you can see, the timer began counting and the first light has essentially reset the second light. And now that it's counting, it transitions from green, yellow, followed by the red, just like we would expect. But of course, we have a hang up because the second light needs to handshake back to the first light and reset it just like we did with the second one. So we're going to also double click this branch. I'm going to add the same exact rung or the same, same exact branch around this red. I'm going to scroll up and copy this branch. So copy branch level, scroll back down, right click here, paste, and I'm going to delete the unnecessary branch level. And of course here we do need to change the tags. So this is going to be light two complete and it's going to reset of the first light instead of the second one. And we do need to create this Boolean as well. Hit create. And so now the second light should be able to reset the first one and the cycle would essentially continuously repeat and go in a circular fashion. Let's compile that and see if it happens. I'm going to scroll all the way up. And as you can see, light one is currently in the green state. It's going to transition into a yellow state after 10 seconds. After three seconds, it's going to transition into a red. And once again, it's going to reset light number two. Do notice, however, that light one is still maintaining that red state, just like you would expect at the traffic light. The light is red for the other side, while the other light is transitioning from green to yellow to red. That being said, we are going to create the HMI interface. So here I'm going to focus your attention on the projects. And once again, street light system, I'm going to right click the system, hit on add, go into a new routine. And I'm going to label this 03 underscore HMI underscore interface so that we know exactly what's going on. It's going to be of type ladder logic and I'm going to hit on okay. 
once I double click this interface, first of all, you will notice that this left area is not green. And that's because we need to go back into the main. So double click the main and we need to implement the same as jump to subroutine that we've done here. So I'm going to copy this rung and I'm going to paste this rung and I'm just showing you different methods that you can do this. You can use the shortcut control C control V, but you can also right click and copy. And we're going to have to call underscore zero three HMI interface. And here, instead of assembling the entire routine, because the HMI interface is going to give us errors, we're going to hit this accept pending program edits. Yes. We're going to then test accepted program edits. Actually, I believe that's going to work just fine. Assemble accepted. Yes. And as you can see, we are jumping into this HMI interface. So this interface should now be enabled. Now here, what we want to do is essentially send three different status bits to the HMI, essentially telling the light or telling which light is currently turned on and which state it's on. And I'm going to do this in a slightly different fashion than, in, than I've done in the last section. Whereas I'm going to, instead of creating descriptive tags, I'm going to combine that into an array of tags. And the reason for doing that is let's go into controller tags and I'm just going to briefly show you all of the tags that we've created so far. And as you can see, there's light one green, light one red, light one reset, light one yellow, green, red. There's going to be a lot of tags in your system. So an easy workaround is to create an array of tags, which I'm going to be showing you right here. So here, interface underscore bool. So HMI interface underscore bool tag is zero. And I'm going to use this array of tags. I'm going to right click this and do a new HMI in bool. And instead of just creating a single Boolean, just like we've done in many other instances, I'm going to put in a square bracket with a 64. And this means that we're going to create an array of 64 Booleans. Now I'm going to hit create and I'm just going to show you what this created. So if I right click this and I go into monitor, this will bring me back into my controller scope tags. And as you can see, this is the tag that we've created. And it's just an array of Boolean tags. And there's going to be 64 of them, of course, ending at 63, because we start with a zero, just as you can see on the top here. And all of these do know that they're all of type Boolean, just like we've specified during the array creation process. I'm going to go back into that routine. And I'm going to utilize three distinct Booleans to essentially specify the status of those lights for my HMI. Now, a very good practice is to not leave these booleans as is because remember, when we are in the light system, we have a very descriptive tag, we have light one is yellow. So you know what that means. Here, you don't have the same system. So you can right click and go into edit main operand description, or use the let me just zoom in a little bit more. Or you can use the control D shortcut. And this will give you the option to give this specific tag a description. So here we're going to type in light one status green. So when this is energized, we know that the light one is in a green status, I'm going to control C. So double click the status, copy. Or you can use the shortcut, which is going to be control C. And then I'm going to use the shortcut control D and then control V to paste that in. And of course, this is going to be yellow. And the last one is going to be red. Now we also need to reapply this for the second light. So I'm going to copy the entire rung, copy rung, and I'm going to paste the rung. And as you can see, my first rung is the same as a rung. So the rung number zero is the same as rung number one. Therefore, I need to use different booleans. So here two, we're going to just continue in a numeric fashion, three, four, and last but not least five. And we're also going to have to give them distinct uh, descriptions. So here, this is going to be light two status green. I'm going to copy this in light two status yellow. And last but not least, light two status red. Type that in like so. And of course, we need to energize those bits. So right now, they're just blank booleans, but we need to have the conditions which energize them. I'm going to go back into the light system by clicking on one of these tabs at the bottom. You can also just double click the light system here. And that does exactly the same thing. And remember, we had these tags which we've used to program our system. So I'm going to control C, go back to the HMI interface, 
and paste that in. And the reason why it's important to create a separate HMI interface is because these tags, these green, yellow, and um, and red can be used for many, many different functionalities. But the HMI interface is essentially something that should not be modified. It's something that should have a single endpoint and just makes it easy for a programmer or the HMI developer to interface to those systems. So light to green, light to yellow, and then light to red. And of course, we need to change this one to a two. And we'll, of course, we'll address, we'll develop the HMI in the next lecture, and you'll see exactly why it is being done like so. So I'm going to compile all the changes, click on yes. And if I zoom out a little bit here, this will allow us to see the transition in a very neatly to understand fashion. So as you can see, we have two distinct lights. This one is green, then the cars get a yellow sign, then a red sign, and then the other side can start going. So now this is a two way lane, of course, or a two way intersection. So green is for one side, then it transitions to yellow to red, while these cars cannot go. And then once this is in red, the other side can now proceed. So this is how we created the HMI interface. And we are now handshaking and everything is working for the most fundamental or most basic uh, light interface.